If you work in any of these roles, odds are you'll come across spreadsheets often. So in this video, we're going to go through the top 10 most useful Excel formulas for finance, and they're not the ones that you might think. So to kick things off in number 10, we've got the aggregate function. So here's the Excel file we're working with, which you can download for free in the video description. So you can see that we want to find the total revenue. So basically all of the sales figures over here, you might think of doing something like equals sum, but when we go ahead and do that and select it, you can see that we get a divided by zero error. That's because we have error values over here. Now, one way to work around that is using the aggregate function. So we would go equals aggregate, hit the tab key there. And so what do we want to do? Well, we want to get the sum, which is that number nine, comma. Now for these options, what we want to do is basically ignore the error values. So we'll ignore the divided by zero errors. So we'll type a six there. And finally for the array, this is the area we're interested in. So we would go control shift down to select it all, close that formula and hit enter. Now we're able to calculate the total revenue despite the errors. Next up in number nine, we have the eDate function, which allows us to make a date sequence. So over here, you can see that we have an income statement and it starts with January. If you wanna go to the next month, you might think maybe you can just do this one plus one but you'll notice that it's still in January, so it doesn't quite work. So instead we'll go equals e date, hit the top key there. So this is a start key, comma, and now we wanna increase by a certain number of months. So just one month here. And so we moved on to February and now we can expand this and hit control R and you can see how it all goes up by one month. Similarly, we could change this to by year. So it would be 12 months. And from there again, I would drag it like so or I could even do it by quarter just by changing that to three months. In number eight, we have the choose function, which is often used for financial modeling. So over here, you can see that we basically have these revenue projections for three years, but we're not quite sure what kind of revenue to expect. So we actually have three different scenarios, a best, a base, and a worst case. So for that, we want to be able to change that dynamically. So depending on how we're feeling, maybe we think a best case or a worst case. So we would wanna change the number here and our revenue would update over here. So for that, we're gonna use the choose formula. So we'll go equals choose, hit the tab key, the index number. So this is the number here that we wanna affect. We'll press the F4 key there. That's going to lock it for us with those dollar signs, comma, then the value number one is our best case, comma. Then we've got the base as the second value. And the third value is our worst case. We'll close up parenthesis and hit enter there. Now we will just drag it, shift right and control R. So now we're at the best case, but if we change this to say number two, you'll see how we now move to the base and same thing with the worst case. Awesome, now in number seven, we have probably the most popular one which is the if error formula. So over here, you can see that we have these um, figures. We wanna calculate the profit margin, which is simply going to be equals to the profit divided by the revenue, and we'll hit enter there. Now we can simply drag that, so shift right and control R. Now you'll notice that we start to get these divided by zero errors. So that's where the if error comes handy. So we'll just double click inside of it and we would put an if error in front. So what this does is if there is an error, it's going to replace the value for something else. So we're fine with this being the value, comma, but now what if there is an error? What do we want it to say? Well, we can just put two quotations, which is the same as telling Excel to put nothing in there and close those parentheses. Now we can go shift right and control R and this way it doesn't look like the formula is broken. In number six, we have the stock data type, which allows us to pull data on stocks from the internet in real time. So you can see over here that we have these stocks that suppose we purchased for this price. Now we want to see what the current price is of the stocks to determine whether we have a gain or a loss. For this, we'll first just select the stocks by hitting Control Shift down. Then from the home, we'll head over to the data tab and then under data types here, select stocks. 
you can see that it's converted these icons into something like a bank. So from here, you're gonna be able to see this plus sign. This basically means that it's now in, in data type. Now we'll hit on the plus sign. And well, we said we wanted the current price. So we'll simply select price there. And you can see that it's activated this whole area with the live price. Now we can find the gain or the loss simply by the live price minus the purchase price. And now we can drag this down by going shift down and control D. And to make the numbers stand out a bit, we could add a conditional formatting by going to home, conditional formatting, and under color scales, let's say we select this one, we can see that Adobe has been our best performer. And speaking of stocks, if you wanna learn more about finance, you can consider checking out our complete finance and valuation course, where you can learn all about finance, valuation, and financial modeling on Excel. For that, just check out the link in the description below. As for the curriculum, we first start with financial statement analysis using Apple's real annual report as an example. Then we get into financial modeling through a three statement model. After that, we begin the valuation phase where you learn to do a discounted cash flow, a comparable company's valuation, and a present transactions valuation on Adobe looking at the real financial statements to eventually derive a valuation range. Lastly, we'll show you how to present an investment thesis using a stock pitch format. We also have several other courses on Excel, Power BI, financial accounting, and more. So if you're interested in checking it out, head over to the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. Moving on to number five, and here, similar to the stock data type, we have the stock history formula. So let's take a look at it. Let's suppose that we're interested in finding out for Apple, this is their ticker, AAPL, what their historical price for shares has been from the 1st of January until today. So we would go ahead and just type equals stock history. The stock for us is the AAPL here, that's their ticker. And the start date in quotations will put the 1st of January of 2023, say. And then the end date, we're gonna use a formula here, just type today in there. This is always going to find today's date. Then we can simply go ahead and close the parenthesis again for the stock history and hit enter. And now you can see that it's found the share price on each day up until today. All right, moving up to number four. And here we've got the future value and present value formulas. And for this, you can see the scenario where let's suppose that we have $10,000 saved up and every year we want to put in an additional 5,000. So we want that for a 20 year period and we hope to get an in interest rate. So basically a return of 8% every year, maybe because we have it in the stock market. So we wanna find out, hey, in 20 years, how much money are we gonna have? So for this, we can go to equals F V, hit the tab key there and the rate, well, 8% per year. The payment, the number of payments, sorry, is the 20 years, comma, and the PMT here is basically the recurring payment, in our case, the annual one, comma. And finally, we have the present value of 10,000. We'll close a parenthesis and hit enter. So this is how much that we can expect to have in 20 years time, assuming these are the amounts we put in. Similarly, we have the opposite, which is the present value. So let's go ahead and link the same future value here just to show you. So suppose we want to have this much in the future. How much do we need to put in today? So we'll go equals PV. Hit the top key there. Rate is the 8%. Number of periods is the 20. Payment is the 5,000. And finally, we have the future value over here. And we can hit enter. And it's going to be the same amount as this in reverse, right? So that's all making sense. Now getting into the podium places, and in number three, we have the X NPV formula. So here's the scenario. You can see that suppose we're working for Uniqlo and we're considering opening up a new store. So for it, we're going to have some cash inflows, which is nothing in year one, maybe because we're rebuilding the store. And then hopefully some cash inflows going forward until maybe we decide to sell it or our lease runs out. And then we have some cash outflows, maybe from decorating it, and as well as maybe the store managers and so forth. 
So we have the net amount, which is simply the sum of these two, and we've got a discount rate. And so we want to find out the net present value, which is basically the value of this project. So we're going to type equals X and PV, hit the tab key there. So the rate is going to be the 8%. That's the cost of capital for us, comma. The values are going to be all of the net cash flows down over here, control shift right, comma. And the dates is all of the years for us. We'll close a parenthesis and hit enter there. So we have a positive NPV, meaning that we should probably proceed with this. Then in number two, we have the XIRR, which is often used alongside the XNPV we saw earlier. So let's take a look at the same example. And instead of just having the dollar return, we might also want the percentage return for this project. So we would just type XIRR, hit the tab key there, and the values, again, it's all of the net cash flow, comma, and the dates is going to be all of the years. So control shift, right? Close the parenthesis and hit enter there. And so we have an IRR of 16%, which is also fairly positive here. And finally, in number one, we have goal seek, which is often used for optimization purposes. Let's suppose over here that we've been told by our manager that if we make $10,000 in profit, we're going to get a big bonus. So that's a number that we want to optimize for. And the only variable that we can change here is the quantity sold, so the units up top. Based on that, suppose I put 100 here, you can see that all of the numbers are going to dynamically switch. So we want to find out what exactly is the number to reach 10,000 in profit. For this, we can head over to the data tab. Under what if analysis over here for forecasting, we're going to click on goal seek. And so what do we want? We want to set the cell, this one, the profit cell, right, to a value of 10,000 by changing, well, what's the variable we want to change? The units, right? And then we can hit on OK and hit on OK again. And you can see that we need to sell this many units. That said, if it's got a decimal in there, that's probably not very good. We can't sell a portion of a unit, right? So we could go to equals and just type round up to round it up all the way to a full number. And we want zero digits there. We'll close the parenthesis and hit enter there. So it's gonna be just slightly above, but now we have a full number. Let me know down in the comments what your favorite formula was or if I missed any important ones. Now, these were all fairly simple formulas. If you wanna learn more advanced ones, check out this video over here. Or if you wanna learn even more, take our Excel course over here. Hit that like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.